Welcome back to another episode. Gonna be doing some uh, bits and pieces on it today. Uh, if you haven't seen the engine section, that's the crank that I'm pretty pleased about for the V12 engine. About 14 inches long. Uh, it's all gone together pretty well, actually. Um, got a steering rack through the post. Not what I was expecting, really. This is actually made of iron. I got one of these for the Porsche, the RSR, and it was really good. This looked the same. I think it was £30, £28 from China, delivered. So it's not bad, but it weighs... I mean, it must be, must be like four kilos. It's pretty heavy. So I probably won't be using that. Might use it for something else. But I suppose it's quite compact. But yeah, it's it's not far off the weight of uh, of a sort of real car steering rack. You know, like for a mini or something. Uh, so today I'm just going to connect up the motor and check that runs with the speed control. Uh, so we'll do that first, just to check the sort of wheel RPM, or axle RPM, wheel RPM. Uh, let's go on and do that. So I've got a four cell battery, well, I've got two four cell batteries. The green one's just running the servo replacement, servo receiver replacement. The bigger one, that's still four cell, that's going into the ESC. And then we're just gonna see what RPM the axle was spinning at to see whether my projected voltage and speed works out. So I'm going to use this old Smith's manual RPM taco rev counter. That's connected up. Okay, it's about 260 RPM on that gauge. Don't know if you could see that. Let's just work out what that is with the calculator. Okay, have some maths. Uh, so 260 RPM times 60, that's revs per hour, uh, times the wheel, um, Circumference, that's the word I'm looking for, is 1.26 meters. And then divide by a thousand to get kilometers. And that equals 19.56 kilometers an hour. So that is a four cell battery. Um, I think the ESC will go 12. I have actually got a couple more of those batteries. So I could do 12, 12 cells and that would give me 60 kilometers an hour with those three. Uh, I do need to water cool the ESC for that kind of voltage. Uh, what I've done is I don't know if you saw in a previous video this did have a heat sink on the top and I cut that off carefully using some um, heat bonding glue I can't remember what it's called it's called 
thermo glue, uh, which is what I use for a lot of PC stuff. So basically I stuck this water cooling block on. So that's got a copper heat uh, transfer plate and then it's got a textured surface. I don't know if you can see that to give it a bit more surface area and then water goes through it. So I run that with a PC uh, water pump and a small radiator to cool that down. Uh, but yeah, that's, it's unusual. I think I was expecting it to do 60 on the calculations and it's exactly that, which is rare. It's rare that I do any calculations at work. So there we go, that's that checked off. Uh, so I need to swap the pot in this for this pedal that I got, obviously from China. Uh, this has three wires coming off of it. I'm just gonna run that in the, into the circuitry so I've got a pedal for Maddie and Scarlett to use. Just an easy way of doing it. I think this was about five pounds, including post. There's obviously a pot in there somewhere. Um, and then need to hook up some brakes. So I need to connect up that caliper. I'm probably gonna put a master cylinder uh, around here somewhere behind the seat, and then run a cable under the seat to new pedals at the front, just because I'm a bit tight on space at the front for cylinders and levers and everything so uh, that should tidy up a bit so i'm going to add the drive to the back of this wheel uh, i've got this boss which fits on the axle with obviously a keyway and i've drilled out one of the bolts i've made that a bit thinner than what it was because it's quite heavy and then i'm going to use this laser cut plate which would be the drive. And that's gonna sit in the back there and drill that out a bit bigger for the axle and add that to it to give it drive. What this will do is it means with the torque of the electric motor and the petrol engine, it won't be going through the spokes, it'll be going direct from the axle to the outside of the wheel. So um, it should sort of, uh, reduce the likelihood of breaking spokes. Uh, so yeah, that is the idea behind it. Let's get on and do it. Okay, drilled a couple of holes in there. Can't drill holes all the way round because it's a split bush, so I still need it to close up sufficiently. So I've drilled that in the closed position, so I know these these holes aren't going to interfere with the clamping. Uh, let's put a bit of Loctite on these, and put them together. I've added a bit of black spray, so it's more difficult to see that drive sprocket behind the wheel. And then I'm going to stick it on with Sigflex 221. This will add a bit of cushioning for the drive. Um, not really a rubber cush drive, but along the lines and also dampen out a little bit of noise from the, the chain drive. seal around there and then we're going to put it on the axle just while it dries so that it's held in the right place typical that I'd run out of sealant while doing that but here's another tube fitted Like 
That's probably enough. Give that a quick smooth off. Let's try and smooth this out behind the spokes. that on the axle so that it sets. So put the other side on to dry. This is one that I did earlier. And that looks like that. So now I'll be able to clamp the wheel on with that bolt and also the spinner will fit on through the centre of the axle. That'll be more of a visual thing. Um, and then obviously the drive is from the keyway out to the edge of the rim, saving the spokes. So that is about it for another part. That's uh, been quite a few hours. It may not look it. Um, if you haven't checked out the uh, engine build, there's the crank, have a look at that. Uh, I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching.